it's new wheel day. All these are carbon wheel sets. And does that mean this is just another addition to all these wheels? Well, apparently not. This is the beginning of the new generation of carbon wheel sets. What do we mean by that? Well, we're gonna to have to open it up and I'll explain. These wheels are by a Chinese company called Upvine. And if you're like me, you've never heard of them. So inside that one big box with these two individual wheel boxes, front and rear wheel of course, and there's handles on top to carry. Now these boxes don't open the normal way. You have the label facing down, you open it like this. So the packing's a little bit different. The wheel floats in its box and held by four foam pieces on the corners. So this is what you get, a rear and a front wheel and a box of bits. And we'll have a look at this box in a minute. In the meantime, we'll have a look at these tags on the wheels. Now these tags are written in Chinese. I don't know what they say, but I'm guessing it says congratulations on your nice set of wheels. On the reverse side, there's a chart there here and it's handwritten. It's the spoke tension of each individual spoke of each individual wheel. So that's our first indication of quality control. The parts box contains two 80mm aluminium stems and valves for tubeless and two plastic tie levers. Having a general look at the rims, the finish is high gloss. The decals are on the top on the outside of that gloss so you can feel them. And you have silver and red there, blitz, and on this one it says upvine, also in a sort of a burnished silver. These wheels come with a rim tape on there so that you can run tubeless or tubed. So let's weigh them with the rim tape on there. Rear wheel first. So I've got 7.9 for the rear, 6.7 for the front. Keep in mind, these are 60 millimeter deep front and rear. So at 1460 grams, that's very light. Now let's have a look at the rim profiles. First, the rear wheel, and we've got an inside width between the clinches of 23 mil. Outside where the tire intersects the rim, right at the very top, and we've got 29. If we slide the caliper to the widest part of the rim, which is actually a bit further down, I measure about 30 and a half. Now the front wheel, the internal is, again, it's the same, 23, where the tire intersects the rim at the very top is 30. Now the widest part of the rim, as is a big difference, is 35. So the rim actually bulges out a little bit, whereas the rear one stays relatively flat. Now these measurements are significant because you can run wider tires. 30, 32, 34, and yep, 36, and you'll reap the benefits of maximum aerodynamics because of the match between the wider tire and the wider rim. Not only that, you'll also have increased comfort from the road vibration because a bigger bag of tire at lower pressure, and also you'll have maximum road contact patch for safety when you're cornering. All big advantages, and this is part of the new generation of wheel sets. Not only that, you also have the depth of the rim. This is a 60 mil and they're only 1,460 grams. So they're making these wider, deeper wheels lighter as well. Just lift up some of the rim tape and we can see there's holes for each individual spoke and the tool to go in there, five and a half mil hex. Each rim has one aeration hole to let out moisture and that's on the left hand side or the rotor side. Something I noticed too is these rims are individually numbered. Now, where did I see that number? There it is, 483. So this is rim number 483, and the rear one is 465. So I'm guessing another sign of quality control. The spokes, of course, are carbon fiber, and they're really wide. They're five millimeters in width, and the thickness, they're one millimeter. 
spoke count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 16 on the clutch side and on the disc side 2, 4, 6, 8. They are crossed on both sides which is good, cross 2 there and cross once on the rotor side and they're not touching as they cross which is standard now for carbon spokes. Front wheel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on the non-rotor side and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so 14 on the rotor side there and they're not touching again. Spoke nipples are not hidden, they do protrude down out of the rim a little bit. Let's check out the build quality of these wheels. First the dishing, so we'll use our digital dishing tool. Zero. Rear wheel, we're out by 0.2 mil. To zero that side. I'm getting nothing there. Nothing there. I'll just check again. Okay, 0 0.1. So maximum out on the front wheel, if we could measure, is 0 0.1. Excellent. Let's check out the true of the wheels. First the lateral or side to side true. More important with rim brakes. Watching the needle, it's going between 91 and 24, the top scale. So that's a difference of 33, so 0.33 millimetres. That's excellent. The concentric true, the up and down of the rim, here we're going between minus 2 and plus 15. So that's 17 difference, 0.17 millimetre. Also excellent. Over to the front wheel now, and lateral true, going between 94 and plus 10, so that's 16, so 0.16 millimeter, excellent. And the concentric true between 80 and zero, so 0.2 to 0.2 millimeter. So the front and the rear wheel are extremely true. Spoke twist, of course you need your spokes to be nice and flat in the direction where you're going for maximum aerodynamics. Blade spoke holding tool shows us if the spokes are straight or slightly out. Checking all the spokes closest to the rim as we can and then as close to the hub as we can get. Believe it or not, every single one of these spokes checks out perfectly. Well, this is the rear wheel. Front wheels just the same, they're all identical. There's one just here maybe, just one, it's just, <laughs> the only one, I wouldn't even worry about it, it's like, it's just not perfectly aligned like all the rest. Well, it's probably the first set of aero wheels I've ever had with perfectly straight spokes. Quick way of determining your spoke tension, just a piece of plastic like a tie lever and listen to the tone, the frequency. So it's a little bit higher than all the rest. All the rest are almost the same. So it's a quick way of determining your spoke tension if it's even without having to resort to a digital uh, spoke tension meter. Just try the other side. Almost perfect, one spoke just slightly more tension than the other ones. But we'll use our digital tension meter anyhow, we'll draw a little graph because that way a picture is easier to understand. So using the digital tool, taking the tension off each individual spoke, writing it down on paper and then plugging those numbers directly into the tension app and this is what we come up with. So at 5% tolerance we can see all the spokes are pretty much the same tension and even the left side to the right side tension almost identical. Excellent. So the hubs are quite nice looking, they've got a satin black. The front one is fairly low flange, especially on the non-rotor side, straight spokes there. And a bit of a flange on that side and they've got machined holes in there to make it lighter. The rear one on the rotor side, the flange is broken up into four pieces, one, two, three, four. 
So it looks like they've used a round flange and they've milled out in between there where your spokes go. On the other side, on your cassette side, quite a large flange, which is nothing to be alarmed about. It means your spokes are a bit shorter and I've milled out the holes there in the flange to make it lighter. Quite a thick flange, not thin at all, both sides. I don't know if you can see that. And it's just a little bit of writing on there. You can hardly see it. You can just see the green part of the V going around on the hub, that's it, on the logo. The rest you can virtually not even see. The hub bearings are steel. Very, very smooth. A little bit of grab wanting to push the axle forward. Okay. So they're not really free. A little bit of grab there, both sides. Check the rear one. Oh, there's no grab now, virtually no grab. Teeny, teeny. I wonder why the front one has a little bit of grab and the rear one hasn't. Something you all want to hear, the clutch. It's fairly quiet. Lots of clicks. Medium. And fast. <laughs> okay, so the clutch wants to go around with the bearings when you stop it. And the clutch before didn't wants to stop. It's very free, extremely free. Just touch the free hub body and it stops. Hardly any resistance there to want to go forward. Some cassettes are really sticky, they go around and they're really hard to stop. They want to push your chain forward onto your chain ring. And sometimes it causes your chain to flap on your chain stay. This is just the opposite. Extremely free. Hmm. I have to have a look inside. Let's have a look at the internals of the rear hub. First, the end cap there. It's got a double seal, as you can see. Double dust seal on the end cap. And these bearings here are steel. So steel ball bearings as well as steel races. So it all comes apart by hand. No need for special tools. And the clutch system is the pawl and spring. So a four pawl system. Pawl and spring clutches have been with us for over 80 years on the bicycle, so they've certainly proved trustworthy. However, you can't change the number of gaugements with the pawl and spring like you can with the DT Swiss style clutch. The clutch ring, if you were to count all the teeth all the way around, there would be 60. And it's non-removable. It's part of the hub shell pressed in in the factory, unlike the DT Swiss ones where you can replace them. Aluminium spacer sleeve and the bearings inside the hub shell are also steel. And easy to put all back together again. On the left hand side of the rear hub, the end cap has a single seal. The front hub and on the rotor side, on the end cap, it has a double seal. And looking at the inside of that dust cap, there's actually a rubber O-ring. So this is what caused the friction when turning the spindle by hand. But we'll see if we can count the number of engagements per revolution. Put the valve, hold down the bottom and just count holding the body. Oops, start again. One, two. 21, there's someone's got a blower out there. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Okay, so 30. So 30 halfway times 2 is 60. So 60 engagements per revolution. Well, the most important part, let's get these wheels on a bike and see how they perform. So we're using the front wheel as a reference because it's a slightly wider rim. And this 28C tyre, 55 PSI, we'll pump them up all the same, blows out to just a fraction over 30.
30 mil tire and this pumps up to 32 and a half 32 and a half and a 32 pumps up to just a fraction over 33 so it seems that as you go bigger in tire size the bulge away it goes out seems to plateau off so i guess if you want to put a 36 on there then it would probably measure out at about 36 and a half just have a guess whereas if you go down to your 28s maybe even a 25 then they blow out proportionally or percentage wise a fair bit bigger because of the rim size so there you go <laughs> yeah, get pulled over for it No. <laughs> winners. I used to be a winner today and he's got his special drugs. <laughs> What's he got? Oh, okay, get us through the 150. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get pulled over for it. <laughs> so we're riding the up finds this morning. It's about the fourth ride on them. Extremely shiny. They look really nice. Okay, I've had these upvine wheels now for five rides. I'm going to do one more ride on Sunday, so it'll be six rides altogether. They've held up just fine. How do they feel? Well, they feel just like you'd expect from 60 mil rims. First of all, yes, you do feel the crosswinds just a little bit as per you would on any 60 mil pair of rims. They're not any more or any less. Aerodynamics, well, they're 60s. Yes, that means they're more aerodynamic than 50s, which are more aerodynamic than 40s, etc. Um, now, I know they've been doing tests over in Germany somewhere as to these rims and frames and all that sort of combination. You know, if you're super duper fit and you're talking about hairline differences, 0.01% of a difference between this wheel and another wheel set, sure, if you can feel that, if you think that makes a difference, then good on you. But for me, well, 60 mils, these feel like pretty much every other 60 mil that there is out there for aerodynamics. They are faster than 50s, you can feel that though. Now, I do like, talking about aerodynamics, do like the fact that they make the front rim wider than the rear because your front rim is the first one to face the wind, rim, wind coming straight on, your tyre and the rim. So you break the wind with your front wheel and it comes along here and of course your rear wheel is tucked mostly behind your seat tube here so you're not going to have a super fat uh, seat tube. So you've got a certain size seat tube which your wheel and rim tyre tucks behind. So you don't want it sticking out too much from your seat tube but it tucks in nicely aerodynamics so hence the rear one is not as wide as your front one. So it's nice that they've made those wheels that way. Now I do like the high gloss finish. I had a rider this morning, we stopped and we were chatting while we were waiting a few others and he goes, oh, they're nice looking wheels, but I prefer matte black. And I thought, oh, okay, but the frame is shiny. It's got a high gloss lack on the frame. He goes, yeah, they do look good on, those, on that bike. So I said, if you've got a matte frame, then go for matte wheels, but this frame's shiny. So oh, I've got shiny wheels on there and I reckon they suit, I don't know. Beauty's in the eye of the holder, what do you reckon? I must say the quality of these wheels is really good. The manufacturing and the attention to detail. First of all, the bearings. I'll just show you. I'll put the bike in the stand. I'll just put an insert. The bearings, as you can see, are really free. 
So you put the valve up higher and the valve will sink down the bottom because it's a little bit heavier than the other side of the rim. Excellent. Now the front wheel, of course, it might hold back a bit because it's got that rubber seal, the O-ring in the end cap there. However, it's still excellent, still very, very free. free. Probably the freest wheels I've had, maybe. Maybe I've had a ceramic pair that might have been the same. But for steel bearings, excellent. The other thing I like is the fact that the free hub here also is very free. Free, free hub? <laughs> so that when you go and stop pedaling, if you're going downhill, you stop pedaling, this free hub is not going to push your chain forward and go flap, 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 flap. Here I am chipping away at your paintwork on your rear stay. <laughs> so that's not going to happen so much. A minor detail, if you like a noisy clutch rather than a quieter clutch, these wheels may not be for you. because it's a spring and pull clutch, not like the DT ratchet system, which is a bit noisier. So even though, though you might take a fair bit of grease out of the clutch, put minimal in, it still won't be noisy because that's the way it is. It still sounds nice though. It sounds a bit like clockwork. 60 engagements per revolution. And it's been no problem with spring and pull for like I said, 80 odd years or longer than we've had, that we've had the clutch and spring arrangement and it's been no problems all, that, all over that time. Although it would be nice to have the DT arrangement in there because they're easier to service and you can buy different engagements if you need to. Still, the quality of this clutch is excellent. Now the build quality of these wheels, I've checked them all out completely as you've seen in the video and even more so in the background, which I haven't shown. I'm going to give these wheels a 9.8 out of 10. Now that's the highest score I've given a set of wheels. I think I gave one other set of wheels a 9.5, 9.6. Now I'm not saying they're super strong, they're super aero or super light or anything. I'm just saying the build quality and the quality of the materials here are excellent. 9.8 out of 10 because for a start, a really good wheel requires a really good rim. So if you have any variation in thicknesses, you'll see that at the nipple. You see one nipple slightly poking out more than the other. As you have a look at the nipples, that's one telltale sign. Well, these are all even. And all the spoke tensions are very, very even, extremely even. So that also says that the rim has been made almost perfectly round. So start off with a good rim to have a good wheel. Now, the way the spokes are slotted into the hub, I know a lot of YouTubers have put up there, oh, that's a no-no, you can't just do that because the spokes will come out, they'll just slide out sideways. Please provide evidence of that, pictures, video, whatever, um, that'll help because I have personally had quite a few wheels like that, including, yep, the famous drive wheels, and you're not going to get a more popular than the Elite Wheels Drive. Um, and guess what? They're slotted in there. I don't know if you can see it, but they're slotted in there. And I had another set of wheels too, I can't remember what they were. They also had the same arrangement. I've never had a problem and I've never heard or seen any of these spokes come out of the hub. If I'm wrong, if there's any evidence, please present it, let us know, um, because it would be dangerous if they did come out, of course, but I haven't seen any, not one yet. This wheel set did not come with spare spokes and I emailed them about it and they said, no, they don't come with spare spokes, obviously. Um, but she said that uh, we'll supply them if you need them. Uh, whether you have to pay for them, I don't know. Pricing wise, it's really hard to nail them down with the price. I looked on the website and a lot of it's in Chinese, so you go to Translate English. And then there's a shop down the bottom because you can't buy it from the Upvine website. Although I emailed them about that and they said, yes, you can buy it direct from us. And that's about all they said. So it's really hard to get much information out of them. However, if you email, you can buy these wheels from Upvine or you can go to their shop if you go down further, but it's all in Chinese. However, you, of course, you can translate it. The, how much are they? They're just over 1,500 Australian dollars, so whatever that works out in your currency. So that's a reasonable price. Well, that's about all I've got to say about these wheels. Really nice wheels. I'd love to keep them on the bike, ride them a fair bit longer, but I've got to move on because I've got another set of wheels that are coming. They want them reviewed, so within the next three weeks, I've got to do them. So very, very nice. If you're interested, look them up, up Vine, and uh, if you want to purchase them, go ahead. I can definitely recommend them. So I'll leave you with this. Upvine's given me permission to show you these clips from their wheels manufacturing. No, this isn't just a copy of a generic carbon wheels factory, but is their own. You'll see the beautiful CNC machining of their hubs.